talking about residual refractive error after cataract surgery. And he comes to us by way of New York um, and then uh, Baylor College of Medicine. Um, and I'm not going to give you the full name or the full titles and all these. Uh, I will let them do that because they're a little, a little long with us giving them a hard time about that. They are a little long. <laughs> okay. Morning, everyone. I'm John. Nice to meet you. Um, friendly reminder, please register to vote. Election day is November 3rd. Um, so today I'm going to talk briefly about residual refractive error after cataract surgery and a new lens that uh, our lab has been studying. Briefly, there are about 3 million cataract surgeries that are done each year in the U.S. And it's been estimated that over 20% of the eyes uh, after cataract surgery are more than one diopters of planned refraction. And there's 1% that could be more than two diopters of planned refraction. In our lab study of explanted IOLs, uh, each year, we receive about 20 to 40 percent of uh, explanted IOLs that were removed secondary to incorrect IOL power. Uh, the good news is that, however, um, in a paper published in 07 by Dr. Crandall, that it seems to be uh, downtrending. In this study of prospect study of over 17,000 eyes in Sweden, um, about a third of their patients ended up slightly uh, hyperopic or myopic when only 11% of that was planned and only 50% or so were emtropic uh, when over 78% were planned. Another area where refractive error is a major issue uh, is in pediatric cataract surgery. Um, aside from PSO, it's one of the major factors affecting outcomes. In younger children, um, there's a very large and unpredictable myopic shift. If you look here, kind of small numbers, but uh, in this group of less than two-year-olds who were studied for three years after the first cataract surgery, their refraction was over three diopters of uh, hyperopia, and they ended up around half diopter of myopia. Additionally, uh, IOL power calculations are much more difficult in uh, less than two-year-olds. So what options are available? In the photorefractive realm, we have LASIK, PRK, LRIs. And uh, LASIK and PRK have been shown to be more effective and um, more safe in, uh, er in smaller uh, refractive errors. And in the intraocular realm, we have uh, IL exchange and piggyback lenses, which my lab mate Nick will talk more about, and even uh, light adjustable IOLs. Um, However, all of these have uh, side effects or, and even the light adjustable IOL, which several uh, studies have shown to be pretty useful, uh, are quite expensive. The light delivery system is uh, by itself over 100,000 euros. So which is best? Um, as I said before, so small spherical errors or even astigmatism, LASIK and PRK, but when you have large spherical errors, uh, piggyback IOLs have been proven to be safer and more effective. However, um, these patients tend to not do as well as uh, younger patients who get LASIK or PRK and their final vision might be 2030 or 2040. So this is our uh, test lens. Uh, it's the Clarivista Harmony Modular IOL system. There is a base component that has a diameter of about 8.5 millimeters. And there's a separate <coughs> optic component that's 5.8 millimeters. And the optic component itself can be either you know, toric, multifocal, monofocal, et cetera. And the base component itself has a lip inside where uh, the optic can be tucked in so that it stays in place. Um, additionally, the design has square edges both in the base and the haptics for uh, decreasing PCO formation. Uh, we've also done previous studies uh, studying the PCO formation and the stability of the uh, lens. In a six-week study with uh, rabbits, we found that central PCO at the end uh, during gross examination was much less than in the control lens, so 3 versus 0.58, and this 4 is the maximum number for uh, PCO. Additionally, we found the lens to be very stable and there was no anterior chamber toxicity. Uh, we think that the PCO formation was reduced because, if you look back here, the uh, lens itself has a nice square edge that's 
further out than the Acrosoft, which is only six millimeters versus 8.5 millimeters, and the haptic itself, uh, also the square edge. So in our current study, we studied the um, stability and ease of IOL exchange uh, using this modular system. We used five New Zealand rabbits. Uh, in the right eye, we had a study lens. In the left eye, we had pure Acrosoft control. We did, uh, we followed them weekly until week six, and we did an IOL exchange procedure at week two to allow for post-op inflammation to decrease and for, to allow for any uh, cortical proliferation to start. And we did a final one at week six to allow for excess, lots of PCL formation and cortical proliferation. Finally, we euthanized and nucleated and did some gross and histopathologic examination of these rabbit eyes. So here is a video of the implantation procedure done by Dr. Mamlis. It's sped up five times. Um, here you see the base is being injected. There's a nice blue color to help visualize the base itself. Use these regular tools. Here's the injection of the optic itself. This is a little line that's tucked in. And is there an upside and a downside on that optic? Yes. Is it pretty square? Like you said? Yes. Okay. So okay, it's pretty easy to inject, pretty easy to tuck in. Uh, here is a week two slow end exam. Uh, Results were similar to our previous study where there was a slight reduction of PCO, not statistically significant. And here are some videos from our week two IOL exchange. This is the study. You see the optic is pretty easily popped out. Not too much manipulation. Here, Dr. Mamlis uses his favorite McCool scissors. And the new optic is injected. That's real time, by the way. This is, <laughs> sorry, this is 10 times speed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and here we have the study control uh, Acrosoft lens. There is uh, more manipulation of the capsular bag and more manipulation required to remove the loops from the equatorial region. Again, the McCool scissors. And here we have uh, injection of the new Acrosoft lens. So, uh, easy to detach the optic from base. However, there was some pupil meiosis, as you can see here, after uh, some manipulation, and it was a bit more difficult to visualize the optic after injection. Um, control lens wasn't significantly stuck, but more manipulation was required, uh, moving the, uh, removing the loop from the equator and having to manipulate the capsular bag. So in our week four slow exam, uh, Sorry, cut out here. But the optic of uh, two lenses were not completely under the lip, as you see here or here, which uh, probably came from uh, the difficulty in visualizing the, the base and the optic after pupil meiosis. And you can start seeing some crazy sneaky, uh, but um, because of there was manipulation, these results are a bit confounded. And here's uh, week six. Um, there is also a trend towards decreased PCO formation, and you can see uh, lots of synechia and, and even anterior cortical proliferation. And this was what we wanted uh, to assess in our week six explantation procedure. Here are some videos from our week six explantation. Again, the optics pretty easily popped out, and the base can be nice nicely visualized, it's very stable inside the capsular bag. And 
here in the office record. video to Microsoft. Significant Synechia license required. Significant manipulation of the uh, IOL and the bag. This is also 10 times speed. So in general, again, it is pretty easy to disengage the optic and the base itself remained very stable inside the capsular bag. Um, in the Microsoft, there was lots of sneaky eye and uh, much more mani manipulation removed from the equator. There was a lot of proliferative material, uh, probably caused from the stirring up of the proliferative material during the second explantation procedure. And there was a significant amount of zvonular stress. Uh, in our gross examination, uh, we noted that the base itself was very, very stable in all four eyes. So here is the control. The, uh, these eyes are aphakic. Um, while we didn't really study uh, PCO in this, in, this, uh, in this study, we did notice a bit the decrease in summering of ring and uh, PCO. And here's a good picture of why we did not assess PCO in this, in this study, because uh, if you can see here, the surgery itself even pushed the proliferative cortical material into the interior of the iris. So here you can see there's a nice capsule bag screen up in the steady lens. So uh, what conclusions do we have? Um, the explantation exchange of this optic in the test lens was much easier than its control. Uh, standard instruments were used, and there was much less zonular stress. The base component itself remained very stable and centered. And uh, in our previous study, we showed that there was much less PCO formation uh, in, in the test lens. Uh, human trials are ongoing, um, and so this could be applied in pediatric cat surgery, et cetera. To my references. And thank you to Dr. Werner and Dr. Manning and my lab mates. I mean, it remains stable. I don't know if we assessed. Yeah, we couldn't. It
you.